consistency is king. It is the thing that will get you the outcome that you are looking for. It needs to happen every time on time. Welcome to the best hour of their day podcast with your hosts, Jason Fernandez and me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. Welcome back. We are in a three-part series all about turning an aspiring coach into a world-class coach. And this episode, episode two of that series, is going to be all about team development. How do you continue to develop your entire staff? So previously, we spoke about whether it's an intern process, onboarding, how to find that coach, go back and watch that. But now we have to talk about, cool, now they're on the floor. Is it just like, peace, we're out of here? How do we continue to develop? Good job, team. Don't suck. Yeah. That's the a, that's a pep talk. D-F-I-U. Yeah. 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 We've gotten um, that advice yeah, before. Yeah, many times. Um, okay, so I, this process doesn't actually start where most people think it starts. And this goes back to something I mentioned in the previous episode, which is if you're going to develop your team, you're going to need to develop your own management skills. Mm-hmm. So what do I mean by management? I mean the ability to establish and convey clear expectations and then build in the systems that create the accountability based on the uh, standard that you just set. And that is overlooked by everybody. They're like, hey, just give me the magic, give me the magic plan. Like, give me the outline of the things that I need to teach people and, and, we, will, and we will go. And that's just not how it works. And so I think there needs to be a couple things in place for you in order for you to build a team. Number one is communication. Like, you need to have good, efficient communication within the team. You're not just suggesting... Your ability to communicate, you're saying how. Yes, how. Both. Your ability to communicate and how you communicate. It, it always makes me, it's like cringe that there are affiliates that still communicate exclusively via text. It's a nightmare. It's, it's eye-opening to our clients when they're like, we started Slack and you were right. It's like hearing, hey, we needed a budget, you were right, like... How you communicate matters. How you communicate, the medium, what you communicate, all of those things, all of those things allow you to get to the point where like, hey, Jay's on the floor evaluating Cody's class and that feedback loop is happening and everybody else is simultaneously kept in the loop too. So everybody skipped all of the important shit, which is like, we could, we could give you a list of all sorts of crazy stuff. We could pull all the best journal articles out of this whole thing and give it to you, but if you don't have a system to effectively communicate and have systems around making sure that, that gets facilitated on the right frequency, none of that shit matters. It, it fundamentally won't happen. And here's the most important part. It will not happen consistently, which is the entire thing that needs to be in place when you're talking about developing a team. Consistency is king. It is the thing that will get you the outcome that you are looking for. It needs to happen every time on time with every single person. We've talked about it in many episodes, but whether it's training, whether it's, you know, doing your budget, showing up and doing the thing. Showing up and doing the thing. And, and let, me, let me just, <clears throat> actionable. The, the reason texting is so bad. We've all been there. It's like, I just sent out this important message and then your coaches fire off like eight memes and then they fire off... Um, you know, make wads great again, latest post, yeah. and then this and that. And the, the or important somebody message. else had a thought that then got chimed in there that had nothing to do with that original thought. And you come to, you open up your phone, like 48 text messages. I'm not reading any, I'm any, not reading of, any of that shit. Download so, Slack. So, yeah. Now, that's a larger discussion about internal communication. So, let's just put that, be like, hey, communication is key here because where and how you communicate it helps you build in the proper systems so that we can get to the development of the team, right? For sure, but I think... Download Slack and use Download it. Slack, or, for sure. Or some sort it. of communication. Some sort, I think Slack is really effective if you, free. If you know how to use it. It's free. Um, so I think you start there. And 
inside of Slack, I think it'd be very beneficial if you had some a channel in there that just says coach development. Okay. And uh, we teach people how to set this up and how to communicate and what frequency and how to, how to build all of that because it, it does really clean things up. Um, from a communication standpoint, like I was looking in some stuff in there today. And even if I didn't read what was in those messages, I know that there is a facility thing that I need to take a look at. And I know there's a couple things in the sales pipeline that need to be addressed. Okay. I know exactly what I'm going to be addressing later now. So developing the team, right? So I think developing the team is an, an ever ongoing process. And first it starts with you. You're the person doing all of the things. And then you can start to outsource that a little bit and create some sort of group effort. Um, so communication is at the heart of all of that. And the first thing I think you have to do is you need to establish what is good. And we've talked about this many, many times. We're like, hey, forget your, forget your coach development plan. Your coach development plan should be personalized to the staff that is sitting in front of you. How would you figure out what they need to work on? Well, you would be getting some sort of assessments on them on a regular basis. That helps you determine what your development plan is. Because if you just like gymnastics, if we're going to teach a bunch of people gymnastics, but your group management is an absolute disaster, you know what's going to make it worse? Adding all sorts of complex gymnastics uh, progressions that you all just learned inside of an already hot mess that is the group. So I think reframing that and be like, let your evaluations and your assessment and the objective metrics that you get by watching your coaches do the thing drive and dictate the development plan. That's the most effective development plan is the one that assesses your deficiencies and we fix those. Well, by the way, we've done that for you. Correct. We have a world-class evaluation. You can download it for free. You can use it. It will, like Fern said, be the impetus for developing the staff and you can meet people where they are. Correct. So I think you develop the communication pieces, you identify this is what good looks like. And then we're, and then this is where people put in all this work and then there's just no follow through. Well, let's talk about simply the act of evaluating because we've taken a coach from aspiring to they're actually on the floor, whether it's getting paid or not, they have their own classes. And then like 80% of the time, that's it. You know, nothing happens past that. I mean, and probably actually more than that, than 80, I would say 90, because people come to us right. and it becomes part of the routine, but more than 90% of the affiliates that are coming to us are not doing that. Right. And you see it at level twos every weekend where it's like, oh man, they're, they're like, I took my level one five years ago and here I am. I'm like, well, what did you expect? Yeah. You, there's there's not much in life you can do without getting evaluated. And, and that can look like many different things, right? Jiu-jitsu, how do I get evaluated? Well, I roll with someone mm -hmm. and they're choking me. I'm like, I'm not as good, right? And I'm learning right now. <laughs> yeah. I made a strategic error. I'm not error. getting choked, I'm yeah. learning. Somehow I ended up right here being right? choked out. Or like for you, I'm sure it was like I'm shooting hoops and like, cool, like someone's watching me, someone's giving me, you have a coach. Yeah. And no job out there will you... I would say no job, but it's rare that you're going to get better without someone coaching you. And that's essentially sure. what an evaluation is. What's a, what's a good frequency of that? I think it fluctuates a little bit, but I, you know, I'm a big fan of this. Some of this is going to be dependent on the size of your coaching staff, but a lot of people, I would say the most common one, this is like the, what's the, what's the expiration date on your punch cards? You're like 90 days, right? M most commonly what we're going to find is once a quarter. And I think that's, very, def very, very deficient. Yeah. I mean, if you're, you're getting evaluated four times a year. I just don't think it's, I don't think it's appropriate. Um, you know, I'd like to see one a month. And, and when, when we've talked about this, people give us pushback like, oh, you're, you're about like, you're just, we're not judging. We're not criticizing. You're coaching. <laughs> we're, we're, we're it, that would be like, you're oh, coaching. You're, you want me to show up and, and take class and, and you're going to coach me? Like, I want you yeah. to give cues to your clients once a quarter. That's exactly right. I'm like, if you feel, if there's this negative connotation and you feel bad about either being the person evaluating or getting the eval, there's a disconnect there. This okay, so be that's a good, this is a good topic to stay with because there, there's, 
this highlights a separate question is why are people so uneasy about the eval? Because they're getting because they're not getting feedback delivered well. It's not it's not being delivered well or it's unclear or it's which is super, the same thing right? or super. Well, you, it could it could be um, it could it could be clear, but delivered poorly. Right. And it could be delivered well, but unclear. Right. Clear would be to, like, that was bad. That was correct. very clear, but it was right. delivered poorly. Right. So I think there is some distinction there between those two. Um, so I think getting on, getting on the same page about like, okay, what would, what would have everybody on board? Everybody would agree to the standard. Great. We're good. Now you're not going to have any pushback on any of that. Like everybody knows. Right? Also, they would be like going to the CrossFit games, walking onto the floor. And Dave doesn't tell everybody what the movement standards right. are. And then there's judges over here doing this shit, and people are just like freaking out and losing their mind. That's what happened in your which, gym. Which has happened before, let's see. <laughs> but and also one time. Yeah, yeah. Here here's another thing that goes wrong. The the person that evaluates, which is often the owner or head coach, doesn't themselves get evaluations. When you say like, hey, I'm in this, like we we chatted with GC of Sinitas, who's the head coach. Mm-hmm. And he gets evaluated, I think it was like twice as often. I mean, just at the staff meeting we had last week, Cassidy told, he was like, I need four of you to eval my classes next month. Right. It's like showing you like, hey, I'm in this with you. I, so, I want to get better too. Right. So I think everybody should get them. Um, now, this is where the, the next objection is, well, I don't want my, my junior coaches giving evals to my senior coaches. That's because you have a bad evaluation tool. Correct. It's not a clear standard because if it is a clear standard, it should be the 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 largest deviation inside of that exercise is going to be the what we could describe, describe as the subjective or the stylistic feedback. That's where there's going to be a, a deficiency. There's not everything else is is quite literally objective, black it's, or white. They did binary, or they, they're binary. Right? They did or they didn't. So there will still be value in that, which you could you will be able to decipher from the yes nos that they put in there. Meaning like, hey. Did they do a good job of seeing and correcting? Well, the sheer volume of yes, no's on that whole thing, which is like, did they say everybody's name? Did they do this? Did they do that? Did they do that? that those check boxes are going to say the overarching yes or no. It's not the coach that was giving the evaluation. It was a coach on the floor either did or didn't do those things. And, and again, don't overthink it. It's done for you. We will provide the link. Just go yeah. download it. It's like Fern is saying, yes or no's, which allows anyone to do the evaluation right and all which is also beneficial because if you do have a 10 person staff and the goal of having a 10 person staff was not to be coaching right all these classes you want other people to be able to do the evaluations i also think there's so going through this how do we start to do this and, and we build the team it's a process right people all regularly have this friction point when they're going from nothing to something right and most people skip from Nothing so they want to try to go full meal deal. I said, well, that's probably not realistic. Just do from, from nothing to something and then make something a little bit more something and then make it a little bit more something and give yourself a runway. And again, set the expectations. Hey guys, we're not currently doing this. The goal over the next six months is that we ramp ourselves up to where we're doing these for every coach once a month. That just relieves everybody of all the stress. Instead of going from like this month we were doing nothing, next month we're just turning up the volume on everybody. Like we're just going from zero to 150 miles an hour with no heads up. We're also going to let you know when it's happening. Or not. I don't know that it matters. Well, I think part of the pushback is like we're trying to surprise you and catch you off guard. It's like we, we should be setting people up for success. Setting them up for success is making the standard clear, not giving them a heads up on when it's supposed to happen. It shouldn't matter if the expectation is clear, right? If the expectation is clear and you are upset because I'm going to be watching the class, the only thing that we could reasonably come to the assumption was that you were going to do a poor job until I showed up. Mm -hmm. You came to the conclusion you were not going to do the standard that we both agreed upon that is completely clear. It's like saying we're going to partner up and judge this workout today. You're right. Like, why should that matter? Yeah, what, you're going to judge me? You I'm weren't like, going to get below parallel? Right, what, you weren't going to squat below? Uh, like, yeah. So that, that one, is a, that's an easy fix because, and, and it typically goes away when that happens. 
So then I think you just start the process and say, hey, the goal this month is to get, let's just say you have 10 coaches. The guys, the goal this month is to get six. If we can get 10, great. But the goal is to get six. Let's get six. Anybody Roger up to get six. I'll Roger up for three of them. That means we need to get an additional three. Jay, Cody, Nate, can you guys give one to somebody else? Okay, great. And by and the, the way, we're paying you your hourly rate. Yeah, to be here. if you can, right? Obviously, if you can, if, if you don't have the money, you can't do that. But like, do your best. And, but you should. And then you work through that process. But the first thing is, is like, we established the goal. It was clear. We measured it. And then we meet on it when we come back to the next monthly meeting. Hey, hey, we, we were shooting for 10. We got seven. The goal was, you know, 10 was a stretch goal. The minimum was six. So like we hit the target. Let's try to ramp that up to eight. By the way, here's some things that we learned in the whole process. Here, and here was the outcome of that. These are, all the, these are all the evaluations that we got back. And the trend here is that we don't do a whole hell of a lot in the cool down. So that's going to be the focus for next month, everybody. Like, let's try to get some really thoughtful pieces into the cool down, whether you're using uh, some mobility things or whether you're using some of Chris Henshaw's, you know, recovery tactics. But choose your own adventure. But what we want to see is that effort should be evident and apparent when we come back in one month. And we've now checked all these boxes. It's, it's no different than programming. We should be regularly evaluating for weaknesses. And then, you know, we're, we're not biasing, right? We're, we're creating a template. Right. And in this case, cooldowns. To targeting. Make, yeah, targeting. We're, we're targeting to see, okay, now we're going to get, and guess what? Next month when we do our evaluations, It'll you guys tell smash the cooldowns. However, the warm-up could have been better. Right. So it, I think it's that's really where, important. I think it's where up. you start to build a team and you bring everybody into that process and you ask a lot of questions and, and, and you group problem solve. Hey, w this is the trend as a whole within the group. Who's got ideas on how we can make this better? Right. I'm not the arbiter. I'm not the arbiter of all things truth. Right. I have my opinions on things, but very likely that one of these other coaches has a a, a better idea than I'm currently sitting on. And a lot of your coaches are more into it at that moment, right, than you are. Maybe you've been doing this CrossFit thing right. 17 years and you're just checking the box or right. you're head down in the business aspect right. of it. So let one of the coaches who's really in it and also maybe has a better pulse on what the community wants. Yeah, and I think inside of that, this is where I think markets. Uh, does a great job. And then I've taken a lot of that into our team meetings. So inside of this coach development idea, you can't lose sight of like, what are we here for, man? Like, why are we here? And be like, well, we want to get better at running classes. I'm like, no. We want to provide a better experience. We want people to have a good time and we want to, we want to see those wins for our clients. So, and I think always attaching all of this back to like, what's the real outcome? The clients get what they came for. So I think a really cool exercise when you're doing these is start with client wins. And they're like, well, what do you mean with client wins? I'm like, listen, go back to how you communicate, where you communicate and how you do it. Like if you don't have a Slack channel that is titled client wins, you should probably start two. there. We have two in best hours. Yeah, right. And they're constantly getting things dropped and in there. And then Katie reads them at the front of every meeting. <laughs> Too long, like, Katie. Get over it, Katie. Right. We no, get but it. this is but this is a big deal, right? It, the big it's a big deal because this is how you this is how you reinforce the why behind what we're doing because it's no longer about like you're doing the eval or Nate's doing that and he's upset because you gave him eval and he didn't like the way he did the feedback. It's not about that. It has nothing it's to do with it. The evaluation elicited this response. Correct. When we do a good job here, this is what happens for our clients. That's the goal. That's why you should be receptive to feedback because this is fundamentally why we are here. We are here to change these people's lives. So how do we do that? We get better at coaching, but we can't lose sight of bringing that back forward and showing the team be like, yo, just so everybody knows, Joy got her first box jump, you know, post surgery. And this is a big deal. This is a five year endeavor that she's been working on. So and so got their first pull up, you know, Bob. Uh, did a muscle up pounds, for the first right. time. Yeah, so and so is down five percent body fat. Like all those things are really, those are impactful things that, you know, when we're talking about communication and creating systems, it seems silly, but you need to capture those things systematically so that you can deliver them back to the team. And be like, hey guys, just so you know, all of your hard work is not for nothing. This is what's happening.
And I think it's, it's a really good exercise that then dovetails very nicely into like, cool, now let's continue that trend and let's get better. But it needs to be tied back to the client. And this is how you, this is how you eliminate a lot of the me versus you. And I don't like the way you give that feedback. It's not about any of that. It's about us being the best possible versions of our coaching selves when we step onto the floor for our clients. That's it. Yeah, and, and by the way, improving and developing your staff isn't only via these evaluations. It's overall development as a, as a human being. Well, but it's happening if you're communicating in, in these meaning because if frequency matters. The rate at which you and I communicate matters. If you and I only have a conversation every six months, many things break. Many things will be misinterpreted, right? But if you and I communicate at a higher clip, all I start to read, I'm like, that's not what he means by that. I'm like, okay, I can tell he's a little bit mad based on that tone. I will not address that now. Or, hey, something wrong. I haven't heard from him. He usually chimes in like right about here. What's going on? So if I've got this really good communication stream between the team, a lot of those things start to happen inherently, but you have to facilitate it. It's your job to lay the groundwork, to plug everybody into that, and then, and then facilitate that interaction. Meaning there needs to be a client wins channel. We need to have a coach development channel in there. We need to have this schedule. We need to have that monthly meeting where we discuss what we were just doing to reinforce it, to then set the plan and then move forward in order to make this happen. And, and, we and need all to... of those things are development. Not, it's not just the act of watching the class. That whole thing is all development. Well, and, and also just developing them as leaders within the Correct. community. Because there's, I know for me, I would, I would do many off-site events. I would bring in guest speakers. You know, we would read books together. There's other ways that you can continue to develop your staff that, again, going back to the reason most people start coaching is not for the $15 an hour. It's because I want to be a better coach. I want to provide a better experience. And I want to level up as a human being. And you can get as creative with the, with, as you would like, meaning you can facilitate all the things that we were just kind of walking through, and you can bring in things that are just right off the top of your head. Hey, everybody read this article, and we're going to discuss this at the next team yeah, meeting. Go or, through the Crossword Journal. Yeah, or read this article, and everybody, or watch this video, uh, this TED Talk or whatever, and then put your thoughts on, in the thread you know, by the end of the week. Like, what, what was your takeaways from this? And that stuff is also really important. But it, again, it doesn't always have to be just there in the act of running the class on the floor. I would actually argue that's the, the least amount of time. If you look at all the other places, you think about all the places that you interact, that's the least amount of time and energy you spend with each other. So it has to happen elsewhere. But that is arguably the most impactful of like, hey, you're doing the thing. I'm giving you feedback on doing the thing. Yeah, it's, so it's we can the come main back thing. It. It's the main thing, but it's, it's teed up by all those other things. And it's this idea of letting your staff know you care about their development. Right. Because being there and watching shows them that, but also taking an interest in their lives and showing them there's other components and facets to being a good coach emotional intelligence, communication skills. You know, we've, many of us on the team have read Unreasonable Hospitality. Yeah. I think that's a great jumping off point. Or Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Like, Both great books. You know, reading any of those, buying a physical hard copy of a, one of those books for your staff and, and talking about it, just brainstorming things we can be doing. Because there, there'll be other things that happen at the affiliate because of it. Yeah, and I think a good way to frame this and think about this is many of us because you just you only think of development in that in the context of that one hour or that one eval. Now, why do you think that way? Probably because you're drowning a bunch of uh, uh, under a bunch of other work, and then you come up for air and you're like, oh shit, we got to do this. So it's not weird that that's the reaction or that's the way that's being facilitated. But really, development is just this ongoing, never-ending series of micro-interactions. It's not like there are the big ones that you have that are planned, but it's, it's all the things in between. It's the middle. It's all the stuff in the middle, and it doesn't have to be left up to chance. A lot of the things that we outlined here are the ways that you start to facilitate that over time. You facilitate those conversations by having regular 
um, designed streams for communication and topics for communication, whether it be Slack channels or you do something like a weekly rundown to your staff or you're doing a monthly staff meeting or you're doing the evals throughout the throughout the month. You know, if you put all of those in place or you push it, you just put one of them in place, that one gets easy. You add another one on top of that. What you have is a high frequency of interaction within the staff, at which point things start to move in the right direction because everybody's on the same page about what's going on and why and when. Well, and moving in the right direction often looks like these aspiring coaches become good coaches and then you're doing such a good job, they become leaders, level four right. leadership, right? Developing right. new leaders to lead the pack. And that's what episode three is going to be all about. We've talked about bringing someone on, developing the team. Now, how do we take someone and make them, whether it's head coach, GM, or just another leader? So you can do other things within the business. So you can do other businesses, whatever that looks like, we need to develop leaders within. And again, check out Affiliate University, hop on a call with Marcus, learn all about what we do because this is what it's all about, developing that staff to allow you to have the freedom, flexibility, financial flexibility and to live the life you want. Yeah, and it's fun to do with people that you like. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.